Alright, what a class, folks. Follow that number to Europe. Should have hit first. Road one, we share the entrance with road two. So be mindful of that, folks. Pause that in the little line. Star, the to the next <laughs> 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 television studio where your favorite artists go to work every single day. It's where we film The Voice, it's where we film Bel Air, it's where we film The Kelly Clarkson Show, and it's where we're headed to right now. Official. We've left that theme park behind. Now, even though I am really good at my job, which again is to ruin movie magic for all of you, I can't do it on my own. You do not want me driving a tram backwards or forwards. And that is why we have our amazing driver. Her name is Arlene. Everybody say, hey, Arlene. Arlene said, hey. I also have a co-host. You probably recognize him from The Tonight Show or maybe his new show, That's My Jam. It's my friend in my head, Jimmy Fallon. Oh, hey there. You made it. Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure that you get through this experience in one piece. You've got the very best guy. Danny. And the greatest driver. Arlene. They're the best. I love them. Even though... Danny. Owes me five bucks. Rude. I know you guys are excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. That's right, safety rules, but make it fun. If you're having a medical emergency, you drop something of value off the side of the tram, or you're having problems with the audio or visual equipment, if you look up, there's a red cord. It runs from the front to the back of the car. Pull that down. I'll come back to assist you as soon as it's safe to do so. Looks like this. Please remain seated at all times. Keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle. The studio is private property, so if you drop your phone or need to use the restroom, pull the cord and remain seated. Please no smoking of any kind. And be prepared. Our tour today features loud noises, fire effects, sudden tram movements, and water effects. We have your cameras out for great photo opportunities, but keep an eye on them so they don't get wet. Finally, for your safety and those around you, please do not use selfie sticks while on board the tram. All right, everybody, we made our way down our timeline. We're entering the front lot of our movie studio. So we're going to first talk about sound stages. The first sound stage you'll see is coming up on your left-hand side, sound stage 12. It's where we filmed the first 20 seasons of The Voice. The logo is still right there in front. And we've recently moved that show to another sound stage on our lot because there's been a lot of construction going on around here. That's right, we are very excited to announce that Super Nintendo World will be opening February 17th here at Universal Studios Hollywood. To find out more, visit our website and social media accounts. Right now we're in a little bit of traffic because we are in a real working movie and television studio. And our front lot is very, very busy. This is sort of like the brain center of it all. You have sound stages, you have casting offices, you have editing bays, you have writing bungalows. It all happens here, so there's always a lot of traffic. Right now we're driving by sound stages 11 through 7. Ooh, it looks like some of those doors are wide open, so make sure you look it over on your left. Inside of sound stages 11, 10, and 9, the show Grand Cruise starring Nicole Byer films. Inside of sound stages 8, 7, and 14, we film Bel Air, which streams on Peacock. It's the reimagined version of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air from the 90s. Inside the same exact sound stages, HBO Max filmed the first two seasons for their show Hacks, starring Gene Smart. that was blinking on the side of Soundstage 7? No? Yes, maybe. It was kind of covered by production trucks. 
Every sound stage comes equipped with those red lights. Those are called wigwag lights. If they're blinking and flashing or if they're glowing bright red, it means they're filming inside and that's a cue for me to hop off the mic. So our sound stages are 98% soundproof, but the 2% can still ruin production. And for whatever reason, they don't want to hear my lovely melodious voice with a slight regional accent on their soundtrack. I don't get it, but I like my job, so I respect it. And that's exactly what you saw. On your left, Soundstage 14. Soundstage 14 was used for the show Superstore. That's where they built Cloud 9. Many moons ago, another big production film decided there, Apollo 13. Realism was an essential element for Apollo 13. After all, we were recreating an important moment in American history, a moment many Americans witnessed on television. We thought about filming in Houston, Texas, where the original control room for the Apollo mission still exists. Unfortunately, NASA's engineers didn't have filmmaking in mind when they built Mission Control. Since there was no room for the elaborate camera cranes and tracks we needed for the shots, we had to build our own Mission Control. Now, I know that clip says shot on stage 21, but that's because as the theme park expands, so must the movie studio. So they've been building new sound stages and renaming the old ones. On your right inside of these sound stages, all your favorite sitcoms have filmed, like Coach, Martin, The Good Place, Mr. Mayor, and now we've brought that quantum leap, and it films inside of those sound stages. On your left, your first celebrity signing of the day, Ted, day drinking, because why not? Ted is also getting his own television show. It's going to be a prequel to the movies and stream on Peacock, so basically you gotta get Peacock. He's standing in front of our bungalows. These bungalows were used as dressing rooms during the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Actors were contracted to work with one studio at a time. The contract could last like 10 years. So when they're working with big stars like Elizabeth Taylor and Jimmy Stewart, these are their homes away from home. Now their offices. We're driving by parking spots, labeled for seven bucks productions. That is The Rock's production company. Next door is signs for Monkey Paw Productions. That's Jordan Peele's production company. Then you'll see a sign that says MP, that stands for Mark Platt Productions. He's bringing us Wicked to the big screen December 2024. After that, Bungalow 5195, currently home to the G. Laurentis Company, but before then, Alfred Hitchcock's office. Now the sound stages over on your left, they're pretty new, very high tech, that's why they look a little different than the previous ones. Inside of there, George Lopez has been filming his new show, Lopez vs. Lopez. So we've been filming American Auto, starring Anna Gasteyer. But the first production to ever film here was Hairspray Live. They filmed their interior scenes inside the sound stages. They danced around the city streets of Baltimore in our back lot, specifically our Metropolitan sets. So today has been driving past some of our production offices. We've been driving by some of the sound stages. That area of the studio is called the front lot. Now we have crossed the border into the back lot. The back lot is a lot more visual than the front lot because this is where we have all the sets that are too big to fit inside the sound stages. And we're gonna be taking the tram all around these sets. We're gonna be driving through these streets. We've got city street sets. We're gonna drive right through the middle of an old western town. We still have the European village on our back lot from Frankenstein. Metro 
sets. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Even if you make it here at the Universal Lot. We're moving on from the urban jungle and headed to another jungle, Skull Islands. It's the original King Kong that, that made me look at the I saw that movie on TV when I was about eight or nine years old. I want to become a film. I like films that just take you away from your real life and sweep you out of the prehistoric times. So I was thrilled when Universal invited me back to Skull Island and it's great to have you along for the ride. Now we have created this 3D immersive experience so you're going to have to have your glasses ready. Don't put them on yet but just have them in your hand because we're about to return to Skull Island. The Universal Tram is winding its way through a very rough, narrow trail in Skull Island, allowing the visitors a little sneak peek at some of the wildlife of Skull Island. Please remain seated at all times. Hold on to your belongings as well as your loved ones. Welcome to Skull Island. some of the world's most advanced filmmaking technology today. 
the audience is in the middle of the environment. They're looking in all directions, there's creatures coming at them, they're seeing Kong from this side, and the T-Rex is from the other side. Working on a movie, we always know where people are looking. They're looking straight ahead, they're looking at the shot that they're working on. Here you have to take into account that people are looking in all directions. Also, one of the things about this ride, unlike the movies that we're used to working on, there's no cuts, because it's one giant shot, this tram that's driving along through Skull Island is where the camera's from. This ring represents the where the screen is 10 meters away. We're really creating about 50 minutes of a feature film. So this is a great example of how filmmakers can create an entire world using only CGI, computer-generated imagery or special effects. But usually they'll combine CGI with something physical, like a picture car. A picture car is any vehicle you see on screen, whether it's television, film, or streaming online. And Arlene's taking us to see some of Universal's finest. So pull out your cameras and phones. We have some cool cars coming up on your left-hand side. about the movie magic used to create picture cars so that we can ruin it. They're not made out of what you think. The Flintstones cars, those were modified golf carts. The Ferrari using Magnum PI has a Volkswagen engine, a dune buggy frame, and a fiberglass shell. And you might have noticed something was missing from the gyrosphere that was used in Jurassic World. That glass shield, right? That's because it never existed. You see, glass is tricky to film with. If it's not angled perfectly, everything in the background reflects off of it, shows up on camera. So instead of trying to angle a glass dome, they said forget it and created it out of CGI. But we've already left those fast and furious cars behind. Let's head over to see some ferocious animals. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Welcome to Jurassic Park, everyone, or at least an area filled with set decorations and picture cars that are used in Jurassic Park and the Lost World Jurassic Park directed by Steven Spielberg. A set decoration is exactly what it sounds like. Anything we use to decorate our sets make them look as realistic as possible. Now over on your left, you'll see the mobile lab that was used in the Lost World Jurassic Park. This picture car, completely made out of wood. And of course, we have our dinosaurs. What are dinosaurs? No, for real though, where are the dinosaurs? I am not seeing those dinosaurs. Oh. Okay, well here's one of them. But I think the other one is oh. That is crazy. Who's ever heard of dinosaurs escaping and just running around? Like, what? Oh, well. It's not the same thing. That's dinosaurs is actually left over of our old Jurassic Park and I was actually in the park and since we have to do Jurassic World, we have to go out. But talking a bit more about Jurassic Park, but more specifically the dinosaurs, the best part. Um, a lot of those dinosaurs uh, were actually practical effects. They were real mechanical constructed dinosaurs uh, that, that the actors could react to in real time. So when you see Laura Bird screaming on camera, she's looking at a real thing, which is actually a small mistake. That's what makes the movie. So actual practical effects play a big role in the filming process and making those movies feel more grounded and more realistic. Um, and then another practical effect that was used heavily in Jurassic Park was weather effects. Because if you remember, there's a massive storm that very um, heavily drives the plot of the film. Uh, so now that we've entered Old Mexico, we are going to do a little demonstration of weather effects and other practical effects. So take a look over to your left hand side uh, to see how we make rain in the movies. It's a very simple process. Just a sprinkler system that'll turn on in just a moment. And there she goes. The water falls down naturally, looks like the real thing on camera. Uh, the only thing you need to do to make sure that you can see that rain uh, 
uh, with the camera's lens is make sure that you have a light source uh, because water is clear so it will not be visible by the camera's lens unless it is reflecting some sort of light to be fully visible. Let's just take a moment, relax here, soak in the rain. Kind of like an ASMR, right? Really nice. And then uh, I'm hearing a little grumpy like up there. I'm not sure what's going on. That's weird. Oh, goodness. Uh, you know, we all want to hear it right now. Uh, so sometimes this area is prone to flash flooding. It looks like that is what's happening right now. My goodness. Ooh. Look at that. Flash flood, everybody. That is actually one of our oldest attractions here on the studio tour. So if you're not familiar, studio tour from 1964, flash flood. across the border from old Mexico into the wild, wild west. Welcome to Six Points, Texas, y'all. This is where some of the biggest and baddest movie and television cowboys have filmed, like Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Audie Murphy filmed here, Clint Eastwood, Jimmy Stewart, and the baddest Jimmy of them all, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Well, I ain't going anywhere, Jimmy Fallon. Now look here. Nice folks in this trap don't want no trouble. They just want to check out Six Points, one of the oldest sets on the Universal Live. I hear this where John Wayne and Jimmy Stewart shot a few of their westerns. That's right. That's where I aim to shoot. We are halfway through the tour, everyone. So I must remind you to please remain seated at all times. And if you need my assistance, pull the red emergency cord. I'll come back to assist you as soon as it's safe to do so. Right now, we're going to Essex, Six Points, Texas. And if you look over on your left-hand side, you'll see four last sound stages. They're very new as well. Inside of there, we filmed American Song Contest with host Kelly Clarkson and Snoop Dogg. It's also where Jordan Peele filmed a few scenes for his movie, Get Out. The area in front of it, we call Park Lake, because there's a lake, and the trees look like a park. It was used in the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Park Lake has also been used to film a lot of what we call pickup shots. Let's say you film a scene in Central Park, New York. You get back to LA, you look at the footage, you're like, eh, I want to change it a little bit. Well, instead of going all the way back to New York, you can just come here, place your actors in those trees, zoom in closely, and refilm the part you don't like. When you edit all the footage together, it looks like you're in Central Park the entire time. That's a pickup shot. The set we're about to drive into right now is called Little Europe, and it's been used the same way. Pickup shots, establishing shots, that's the first shot you see that lets you know where the movie or television show takes place. Maybe you don't want to go to Europe at all. That's okay. Just come here, dress the setup to look like whatever European country you want it to be. Nobody knows the difference. This is where Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy had their romantic Parisian date in the 2011 Muppet movie. Nobody had a clue. It's even been turned into fake European countries, like Genovia and The Princess Diaries too. Right now, it's not really dressed like a country, but it is dressed like a place. A good place. You, Ellen Shellstrom, are dead. The location, the afterlife, come on. I have never ever seen this. You're in the good place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. Okay, well, maybe it's not all that bad. How can I help you? What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. 
As you drove through Little Europe, I hope you to know the bright pastel colors you chose, the flowers, the signs. This is art design and set decoration. Everything's very specifically chosen to help tell the story. But then the backside looks different because the good place didn't film back here. So they didn't need to do anything to this part of the set. This is a little closer to what all of Little Europe looked like during the late 20s, early 30s, when we invented the monster movie. Movies like Frankenstein and Dracula, they filmed in Little Europe and went on to create the horror genre as we know it today. And now we're entering sound stage 50. So I know I just reminded you to stay seated, but I have to do it again. That's because there's a mechanical effect that was built into the walls of this sound stage. It's been turned off because we're in here, but it's something you need to be made aware of. Actually, that effect is one of the reasons why this sound stage is so unique. The other reason is that like most sound stages that are just giant empty warehouses, this one was created to look like a subway station at all times. other side of Six Points, Texas. From this angle, something you might be able to see that you couldn't see on a Metropolitan sets is that these buildings, they're all just facades and shells. Fronts, sides, tops. Really you need to build what the camera can see. Then we can rely on your imagination to fill in the rest. So usually when you're seeing a scene that takes place indoors, it's inside of a sound stage because they can create a lot of space. Outdoors, it's here in a back lot set. You edit it together, it looks like it all happens in one place, in one location, and that's sort of how the majority of movie magic is done. Now, if we're not going to build entire buildings, we're not gonna use expensive materials like brick and stone. The wood is real, but when you see brick and stone, it's all just plastic sidings that we press out in a mill and attach to wooden frames. They paint it all to look as realistic as possible, but if you touch it, it all moves underneath the weight of your fingers. Now, because our Six Points, Texas area is one of the oldest areas of our back lot, especially Denver Street, which is over there on your left-hand side, that's where the classic show Wagon Train filmed, and it used to all connect all the way to the center of Six Points. But because all of this is so old, sometimes when you see brick buildings here, it's not even made out of plastic. It's made out of foam rubber. So they used to use foam rubber for the sides instead of plastic because it was easier and more available, but also softer. 
You see, in every Western, there's a fight, there's a brawl, right? So what, our cowboys are getting hit over the head with chairs, they're getting thrown through windows and pushed up against walls. Now, even though they were brave, they weren't silly. They wanted to keep them safe. So the chairs are usually made out of a light balsa wood, so it would break easily. The windows, they were made out of a sugary type substance called sugar glass, so it would just break like this and it wouldn't hurt them. And the, the building walls were made out of foam rubber kept them safe. And hit the ground first. Mine was taller. You know, I don't know about you, but I'm still a little shooken up by that earthquake we experienced. So let's go someplace to calm our nerves. No, usually when I need a little me time, I head on over to Amity Island. It's a beachfront property we have here. It's really nice and peaceful. Just a great place for self-care. Okay, full disclosure, we did have a shark issue. But as you can see, I called him, I struck him up, and I left him up there as reminded all those sharks were looking at. Oh, no. Wait, is that George? Hey, hey, George. Swim away, there's another shark. Oh, no. Uh-uh. Anyone, please stay seated. Okay, we'll keep it moving here. To Steven Spielberg shark Bruce. We named after his attorney, Bruce. And if you're a fan of the movie Finding Nemo, you might remember the shark was named Bruce. That was to pay tribute to the movie Jaws. So our shark works wonderfully. Steven Spielberg shark, not so much. They did test it out. They put it inside of a tank, filled the tank up with fresh water, everything went swimmingly. Then, on the first day of filming, they took it out to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and it sunk to the bottom. That's because the ocean isn't made out of fresh water. It's made out of salt water. You gotta factor that in if you're gonna build a mechanical shark. That's a much maligned shark. The shark was frustrating. It, it didn't really work all the time. It didn't work hardly at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio waves. They were always saying, the shark is not working. Repeat, the shark is not working. We just waited around. We just waited and waited and waited. The shark worked. Well enough for a while there had the things that So I really owe the shark a lot. The majority of Jaws film on the East Coast in Martha's Vineyard, but another production did film in our Amity Island area. What she wrote? That was Cabot Cove. Right now we're actually driving around several of our residential sets. On your right is the Chicken Ranch. First created for the musical, the best little whorehouse in Texas, starring Burke Reynolds and Dolly Parton. As we make our way around the bend, you'll notice half of the house built next to it. We created that for the television show about a boy. So now if you film at the chicken ranch, it looks like they have neighbors. But their actual neighbors are located on your left-hand side on Col Colonial Street. And for a while, they were very desperate housewives. So Colonial Street was Wisteria Lane and ABC's Desperate Housewives. You're going to see it over on your left-hand side in just a moment. And last year, Rob Zombie wrote and directed a movie version of The Monsters for Universal. And for the movie, he had a new version of The Monsters House built. We have the original Monsters House on our back lot on this street. This is called Colonial Street. And the third house on the left, which is on the corner right in front of us, that was 1313 Mockingbird Lane. So it looks a lot different now, but back in the 60s, it was dressed to look a lot. Right next to the Munster's house, the yellow house, is where Terry Hatcher's character Susan lived on Desperate Housewives. And for seven years, these houses in the street was used as Wisteria Lane. If there is one thing every Wisteria Lane
I ever shot scenes out in this part of Van Lock. And we're currently working on a new TV show called Ted. Earlier we passed by the statue of Ted, the talking bear. We're doing a series. Uh, Seth MacFarlane, who directed the two films, he's produced the show. He's going to be the voice of Ted, like he was in the movies. But Mark Wahlberg played John Bennett, the main character of the two films. The TV show is a prequel, and it takes place when John is still a teenager. So we have another actor, his name is Max Burkholder, he's going to be playing John. It's going to be streaming on the Peacock Network, and even though it's made for TV, they have assured us that they're not toning it down. So uh, Ted is apparently still going to have a potty mouth. We've also been using this for a backlog for Walk of Leaf, and this is a show that I've talked about quite a bit throughout the tour. It's on Monday nights on NBC. Another show that comes shown a lot, it's on our sound stages. It's on Monday nights on NBC. That's my jam, hosted by Jimmy Fallon. You know, an area does not have to be a well-constructed set like Colonial Street in order to be used for filming. Every nook and cranny in this back lot is fair game, including the street we're driving up right now. If you look closely at the trees, maybe you'll recognize them from the Netflix hit Bird Box. Desperate housewives from the car crash scene here. So did the Fox show 911. And what do we need to create a car crash scene? More picture cars. You know, the drivers of these cars, they all made the same odd choice. They all decided to park behind the Bates Motel and Psycho House from Alfred Hitchcock's classic thriller, Psycho. Wouldn't be me, would not be me. Norman face this home. Be cool, calm, and collected. We got this. Hey! Hi, Norman. How you doing, buddy? You good? Seriously. Norman. Straight to the... Norman, can we talk? Can we have a conversation? He just straight chooses violence. Everyone please ignore him. Man's been dealing with mother issues for decades now. Instead, taking the fact that we've just entered one of the most impressive sets in Hollywood history. This is the crash site from Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds. The airplane crash site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around a vision of Steven. We first began to sit down to talk about War of the Worlds. I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. You're doing good. War of the Worlds, directed by Steven Spielberg. Now that is a real 747 Boeing airplane that was bought and destroyed just for this set. When every airplane reaches a certain mileage, it's automatically retired. This one was retired in an airplane graveyard in the Mojave Desert. So production was able to pick it up for a measly $60,000. However, it cost them over $200,000 just to get it here. Once they did, it took them three months to build this set. They filmed on it for a week, and it's in four minutes of the movie. But Steven Spielberg wanted realism. And Steven Spielberg gets what Steven Spielberg wants because he's one of Universal's 
favorite directors to work with, and he considers this his creative birthplace. When I was about, I don't know, 16 years old, and I began hanging out at Universal during my summers. We went to college nearby. I continued to come on the lot and try to become a director. So Universal sort of is my birthplace. This is the place I consider my first home, and I love it here, and uh, I keep coming back. You Before there was a Steven Spielberg, Alfred Hitch Hitchcock was that guy. But we're adding a new name to our list of favorite directors, and that name is Jordan Peele. We're about to enter the actual set used in his newest movie, Nope, which is streaming on Peacock until March 17th. And here to tell you all about it is the man himself, Jordan Peele. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible notion and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's Claim, a nostalgic, small-time Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky Juke Park. Over there, look into the winking well and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie Kid Sheriff. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? Why? Well, a little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. It's not looking so live anymore. Anyway, behind this Hollywood rush frontier town lies a sinister secret. It is smack dab in the center. to the world of no. to the mind of Jordan Peele, everyone. Nope. Now we have about 15 minutes left on this tour. So for the very last time, I'll remind you to please remain seated. And if you need my assistance, pull the red emergency cord. I'll come back to assist you as soon as it's safe to do so. Huh. Folks, we're making a detour here. Everything's fine. It's just that, well, here's the deal. So we took our buddy John here in the front car to Vegas for his birthday. Um, had a lot of fun, he's a marvelous dancer, but we saw a few things we probably shouldn't have. And Well now some guy named Shaw's after us and the FBI wants us for questioning. It's okay though, it's completely under control. John is apparently good friends with a guy named Hobbs. Yeah, he and his crew, they're gonna help us out. We just needed to meet them here inside of Sullivan's truck repair so they can take care of it. So. Guarantee my safety? I'm the one holding the gun. 
Yeah, but mine's a whole lot bigger than yours. Mom's escort this now this out. Let's go, Cookie Puss. You got an ugly suit on, man. It's cheap. Somebody out there really pissed off Shaw. It's gonna get ugly fast. Yeah, don't worry. Lucky for you, our whole family will protect you. Are you kidding me, Roman? You didn't shut off your phone, bro? I gotta call you back. I'm just, I'm in the middle of the night. You see what I'm talking about? Call you back. Man. It was on vibrate. Sean traced us. I just can't hold it forever. Levy, Roman, we're up. <sighs> Driver, move that vehicle. It's about to get real interesting. Lisa's all warmed up right next door. Roman, grab your truck. I need you and Levy ready to roll. Well, that escalated. Uh, everyone, you know those 3D glasses? Well, they double as protective eye gear. You know, just in case something goes down. Well, it's about to go down, so... Put on your 3D glasses. Let's try to stay as quiet as we possibly can. Which one of you is the witness? Speak now or you all get fried! This is our turn. Universal, we'd like to thank you so much for taking this tour with us. We hope you enjoyed your exclusive behind the scenes look at some of Hollywood's hottest filming locations. To purchase the NBC Universal movies and TV shows you've seen throughout the tour, visit www.uphe.com or ask one of our retail stores today. And here's a tip for the rest of your time with us. Make sure you download the Universal Studios app. That's how you'll get up to the minute park information. Wait times for rides like Secret Life of Pets and closing times like 6 p.m., which is when we close tonight. 